Hey guys! I was a little shocked after reading your comments in the last videos on baking soda that a lot of you have never heard of people putting baking soda in their hair. Well, it's actually a thing, like a popular thing. It's kind of crazy to me how you'll read a blog post about how wonderful baking soda is and then you'll go and try it out on your own hair. But a few months later, that same person will write a new blog post about how baking soda destroyed their hair. What do you do with that? So it's really important to me to look out for my people and give you a lot of information on the topic. So if you plan on trying it, you have a better understanding of how this compound interacts with your hair and what to expect. This way, you'll have more control if you decide to use it. If it's something you're curious about trying, or you want to increase your knowledge on the topic, below are links to the last two videos. One about the pros and cons of using baking soda on your hair, and the other is on the baking soda relaxer. In this video, I want to give you a closer look of how baking soda and apple cider vinegar together interacts with your hair. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So far from the series on apple cider vinegar and this series on baking soda, we know that apple cider vinegar is a good bacterium-filled acid called acetic acid, and baking soda is an alkaline salt called sodium bicarbonate. Some people use baking soda as a shampoo and apple cider vinegar as a conditioner, and some people mix the two in a bowl and use that mixture as a shampoo. So let's go over both methods to see how they work. But first, there's something I want to clear up. The language we use to explain how the outer cuticle layers of our hair strands work can be a bit misleading sometimes. Saying that cuticles open and close makes people think that they're like doors with a hinge. That's not really how they work. Similar to the cuticles on our nails, the cuticle layers of our hair are uneven, overlapping thin strips. They lay overlapping one another on the surface of every hair strand as protection to the more fragile layers underneath. And just like the cuticle layers of our nails, they can get dry and chip off. And they can also be well lubricated and lay flat and tight. So going forward, depending on what area of the pH scale I'm talking about, when referring to cuticle layers, I'm gonna change my language from open and close to words like relax and tighten, and for areas outside the safe zone, dissolve. All right, now that we got that cleared up, let's get back to the video. I covered in detail how baking soda and apple cider vinegar interacts separately with our hair. So if you wanna get a more detailed explanation, you can find the links to those videos below in the description section. As a simplified explanation, with a pH of nine, baking soda has an alkaline pH that's outside the safe zone. And with a pH of two, apple cider vinegar has an acetic pH that's also outside the safe zone. The general belief is that since the alkaline pH of baking soda relaxes your cuticles, doing an apple cider vinegar rinse after will tighten them back up. The concept of using one product to relax your cuticles, followed by another product to tighten them back up, is a real thing. But if you do it regularly, it's only safe if you're working within the safe zone because products that have a pH outside the safe zone cause more drastic and permanent damage to your hair. I'm not against using baking soda on your hair, but I strongly suggest not to use it too often, dilute it with water, focus it on your scalp and not your hair strands, and follow it up with a properly diluted ACV rinse. Too much obstruction of dead skin cells bacteria and even mites around and in your hair follicles can slow down hair growth. Baking soda and apple cider vinegar has the power to deep clean the follicles in your scalp. I don't know about rapid hair growth, but with clearer follicles free of obstruction, your hair is free to grow at its potential rate. But too much too often can be very damaging. So think of it as a scalp treatment that you do once to three times a year to clarify your scalp. So for the separate method, the order would be baking soda scalp treatment, shampoo, then an ACV rinse. The combined method involves mixing baking soda and apple cider vinegar together first before using it on your hair as a cleanser. In order to understand how this mixture interacts with your hair, there's a chemical reaction we have to go over first. 
When you mix baking soda and apple cider vinegar, you get sodium acetate and carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is reactive and decomposes until it finds equilibrium. It does this by releasing its carbon dioxide as a gas. That's the bubbling and fizzing you notice. After the carbon dioxide escapes, you're basically left with sodium acetate, which is a salt and water, so salt water. The pH of this new solution is somewhere in the neutral area. Again, I'm not too sure about rapid growth, but salt water is actually really good for your scalp from time to time. Especially if you have scalp issues like dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis. It detoxifies elements like mercury, reduces inflammation, and even helps to heal tiny cuts and wounds on your scalp. Salt water also provides some surfactant action that deep cleans and removes oily product buildup. Sodium acetate is a deliquescent salt, meaning it has a strong attraction to water. So it will make your hair strands very, very dry and stripped. So just like with baking soda, if you plan on using it, don't use it too often. Think of it as a scalp treatment to use once in a while and not as a replacement for shampoos. Salt water of any kind creates a high saline solution that builds up on your hair and makes it feel really stiff and dry over time. So focus it on your scalp and avoid your hair strands. Also, follow it up with an acetic, highly lubricating deep conditioner and preferably a real protein treatment to help reinforce your cuticles and ensure your hair holds up to its soaked in moisture. And yeah, to make life easier and cheaper, you can just mix three to four tablespoons of sea salt with two cups of warm water instead and use that. You'll end up with a mixture with a pH between five and six. So the order should be salt water scalp treatment, shampoo, then a deep conditioner. That's it for the baking soda series. I hope it was helpful and covered all your questions. If not, ask away below. I may not be able to answer all your questions, so if you're experienced and knowledgeable on this topic, help a sister out. You can also find me on Instagram. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.